Greetings, I'm Pastor Jeff, and this is Thoughts of Grace. Have you ever gone about your day only to stop and ask yourself, what is that smell? It's so abhorrent, it's so rancid that you have to find out what it is. And when you think about it, most of the time when we encounter a particularly pungent smell, it is rarely one that incapacitates you physically. But we all do the same thing, don't we? If something stinks, we have to find out what it is, give it a whiff to confirm, yep, that stinks, and then we have to get to the bottom of it. And we all have different ways of trying to avoid unpleasant odors. A lot of times, we just try to hide it. Think of going to a nice restaurant. If it is any good, then chances are you won't even be able to tell where the dumpster is. They hide it, and oftentimes they hide it in the back. Why is that? Because if you as a paying customer are going somewhere to eat, the last thing that you want to smell is dirty, rotten, stinking garbage. You won't even know that there's garbage that exists at that restaurant because they hide it. Another way that we try to avoid unpleasant odors is a lot of times we try to mask the smell. When I was a young man, really a junior high boy, I, I was going through the perils of terrible hygiene. And I had a theory. If I didn't take a shower, but I put on my spray-on deodorant, I would smell just fine. And I would just run that over my body for a few minutes, a few minutes here, a few minutes there, and I thought that people would be pleased by the aroma as they encountered me. This is known as the junior high fallacy. You see, in the locker rooms or camp cabins or anywhere a junior high boy might be, uh, they leave a mushroom cloud of body spray that lingers in the room. It's, it's forming its own ozone layer, this unholy mist that rises to the rafters to create this noxious atmosphere that keeps the foul in and keeps the pleasant out. If, prisoner, if prisoners were led uh, into that room, they would shout, Human rights violation! I thought gassing people was against the Geneva Convention. In my years of working with teenage boys, I have experienced this many, many times. You start, you go into the room and you start to hack and you start to wheeze. And they have, they're oblivious to it. They have no idea how close they came to killing you. This is the junior high fallacy. No amount of masking will cure a foul odor. You could try to hide it, you could try to mask it, but the best way to address a smell is, is you have to address the origin of that smell. Our lives give off an odor different from the one that could be sensed with our noses. It gives off a spiritual odor to God, and it gives off an odor to our fellow human beings as well. It could be pleasant or it could be smelly. The question is, why do we give off the odor that we give? What can change that odor. We're going to take a look at God's word in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 14 through 16. This is a spiritual principle. I didn't just pull this out of my rear end because that would be smelly. No, it is found in God's word. Let's read. Now thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in Christ and through us reveals the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. For we are to God a sweet fragrance uh, of Christ among those who are saved and among those who perish. To the one we are fragranced of death, which brings death. And to the other, the fragrance of life, which brings life. Verse 14 states that God causes us to triumph in Christ and reveals his knowledge to those around us. Our smell should point to Jesus Christ. The natural smell of humanity is one that stinks. The Bible refers to our righteous works as filthy rags. Even the good things that we're able to muster still stinks. It still has this noxious odor. The book of Isaiah refers to our rebellious acts as smoke that fills God's nostrils. And he warns us not to come any closer to him because he is holy and we are not. So if we stink so bad, how can we ever get to the point where we can point to Jesus Christ who is holy and perfect? 
How can we even get close to him when he says that we must stand back because of our own stinky sins? The answer is Jesus Christ. When we come to Christ, we are a new creation. The old, stinky things have fallen off from us, and the new, fresh life from Jesus Christ is all that remains. So what do we do with this fresh and new life? We share it with other people. Jesus was a witness about his heavenly Father. He pointed people to him. And just at, like Jesus, we too are witnesses. Acts 1.8 says that we are witnesses to the world about Jesus Christ. We point people to him. When your life is submitted to Christ, there is no hiding him. There is no masking him. His life oozes from you. And people cannot help but be drawn to that life. I've heard from many Christians who use and perhaps misuse the verse that the world will hate us because of the Christ Jesus who is in us. And of course that is true. It's in God's word. We are seeing it more and more in our culture. But I think that verse is often used as a crust, uh, as a crutch to justify our own crappy behavior. We are a jerk to those around us, and then we blame it on God. And we quote that verse saying, after all, Jesus said we would be hated by the world. No, they just hate you. Because Jesus hasn't made an appearance in your life in a long time. In the beginning, the book of Acts, in the beginning of the book of Acts, Christians were not very popular. They were hunted, they were beaten, and they were imprisoned. But there were still a couple of things that were very noticeable beyond those things. And one, others could tell that the disciples had been with Jesus. When, when they saw the disciples and they saw the way they talked and they saw the way they acted, it was very clear. These people had been with Jesus. It was clear. It was oozing from them. They couldn't hide it. They couldn't mask it. They were giving off this holy fragrance that can only come from Jesus Christ. The second thing was is that the disciples enjoyed the favor of the people. It literally says that at the end of Acts chapter 2. The disciples enjoyed the favor of the people and God added to their number daily. So think about this for a moment. Even though there were plenty of enemies uh, of Christians and of Christianity in general, God was still working. He still used the lives of Christians who chose to remain in him to draw others to, rela to a relationship with Jesus Christ. If there, are a, if, there are a few if there are a few people who are willing to listen to you, if you are generally despised, would you consider the possibility that maybe you are not serving Jesus? It's something completely different than them seeing the Christ in you and hating you. It is you are just being a jerk because you're not remaining in Jesus. Because if you remain in Jesus, just as the disciples were in the book of Acts, then God would use you and you would at least have favor with some people. So if you find yourself where you are generally despised, would you consider that maybe you're not serving Christ and your life is giving off an odor that is pointing people in a different direction other than Jesus? If that's you, we've discussed last week that Jesus is righteous and just to forgive us our sins if we confess to him. Would you consider doing that today? Our second point is, is that our smell should be resolute. We live in very strange times. We have things that are being tossed about every which way. Things that are right and things that are wrong. If you take a look at this goofy virus, for example, uh, we have scientists, doctors, and politicians on one side saying with conviction that we should be doing these things. And then you have other scientists and other doctors and other politicians on the other side saying that we should be doing something completely different. And both sides have the arrogance to look down at you and, and, and as if you're so stupid or unspiritual to not see the alleged truth that they're speaking. Politics saturates both of their arguments all the while screaming that the other side is letting politics rule their decision. It's getting out of hand. 
and all of this back and forth, which really ha isn't anything new for humanity. We have been debating things back and forth for a lifetime, uh, for a whole, all of human history even. We should have a consistency if we are followers of Jesus Christ that never wavers. If we are in Christ, we are not looking for our agenda to be fulfilled. We're not looking for our agenda to be even be favored by other people. We are only looking for the name of Jesus to be lifted up no matter what. It doesn't have to be the same way. It doesn't have to look the same way as we have always done it. The medium and the tools doesn't have to be the same. Only the content and the motivation behind it stays the same. If we remain close to Christ and his mission, if we remain consistent, we will give off a fragrance that is not only pleasing to God, but pleasing to others as well. And our third and final point, our smell reveals our finality. Verse 16 says that the fragrance of our lives points out, uh, points out the death to those who are dead. And it reminds others of the life that those who are, of, are alive. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, your life should be one that points to the rescue of Jesus Christ, to those who are lost without him. Our fragrance should be one of reconciliation. No strings attached. None of this, you could be reconciled, but only if you agree with me on certain issues. None of this, only if you clean yourself up, then you can come to Jesus. The only requirement is to come to Jesus and to submit to him and nothing else. Are you engaged in reconciling lost people to Jesus? Or are you too busy pointing out how evil and terrible they are? Or how evil and terrible things have become? Are you longing for the good old days where things were really good, but things are so bad and nothing that you say is positive, nothing that you say is pointing people to Jesus, you're just constantly pointing out these are bad. It wasn't always this bad, but things are really bad now. Are you committed to directing people to Jesus' rescuing arms? Or are you wanting to add your political and social message to the process? Are you saying, yeah, Jesus is good, but you better believe this too? Our finality will not be determined by the things of this world, no matter how noble they may be. Remember, our righteous works are still filthy rags in the context of eternity. The only thing that, uh, that we'll do is focusing on introducing the present to eternity and see God clean up what only he can clean up. Let's let the fragrance of our lives point to Jesus today. We had a great time with Pastor Julie and her team as they ministered in the adult service this past week. You can catch that content on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel and on our website as well. And if you're wanting to guarantee a seat, we are opening up our sanctuary more and more to fit more people in there. So if you want to guarantee a seat next Sunday, then please click the link in the description of this video or call and email the office. That information will be at the end of the video. Our Facebook Live starts at 11 a.m. So if you find yourself or you still feel like you can't come outside and join us in our building, then feel free to still join us on Facebook Live at 11 a.m. And a recording will also be on our YouTube channel and our, we and on our, we and our website later on that evening. Can't wait to see you Sunday. God bless.